and now our electric field is equal to this one the line integral is equal to this one we move in this field which is due to the source charge Q and we reach from A to B here now whatever way I start from B and come back along this path or any other path and reach here because the integral is taking the endpoints, then what will be the situation when I will take a closed loop integral? This is open loop, one side. Closed loop, I am returning to that point in E dot DL, and this is equal to for a closed path, the RA is equal to RB, means I will return to the RA again. And this means that RA for a closed path will be equal to RB. They are now the same points. And that's why they will cancel them. And we will have the closed path integral here equal to zero. Basically, um, I will tell you uh, some interpretation behind this one. But uh, first, let me complete this situation. And here, I can now apply the Stokes theorem. Now as we know that the Stokes theorem says that if we take a surface integral and we take the curl of any physical quantity, a vector quantity, dot dA means is the flux of the curl of that quantity, then it is the same that if you take a closed path integral and you take the quantity directly and makes its dot product with the length element. So this side is exactly the same as this side. So from here I can write that E dot DL is equal from here, E dot DL is equal from here to integral on a surface del cross E dot dot DA and this is equal to zero. This implies that del cross E is equal to zero. Means the curl of electric field is equal to zero and this is something which we were behind to prove that the curl is equal to zero. Now let's start here. Del cross E is equal to zero. We know that what is E? E is the force on a unit charge. So I can write that this implies that del cross F over Q is equal to zero. And this implies that del cross F is equal to zero. So the curl of the field is equal to zero. Then the curl of the force which is associated with that field is also equal to zero. And such a field is called a conservative field. Such a force is called a conservative force. And when in integral form, a field is conservative if its closed loop integral is equal to zero. Such field we call is conservative field. We say that it is E dot DL is independent of the path. It only depends on the first and the last or the starting and the end point. Such field we call is conservative fields. Now what is basically this thing, E dot DL, this is basically the work done on a unit charge because this is E is from here equal 
to force per unit charge dot dl and this is equal to 1 over q f dot dl and what is f dot dl? f dot dl is the work done dw and as it is integral so this is integral and q and this is equal to the work done on a unit charge. So this tells us that uh, we will define in the next lecture this thing in terms of potential and potential is basically the work done on a unit charge. This is the work done on a charge. As long as you are in a conservative field then the work is independent of the path. The work done is independent of the path. Like gravitational field is conservative field. If I raise it to this point, the potential energy that I have stored in this one is equal to mgh. Means it only depends on the height. It doesn't matter you move it to this point this way or any other way you reach here. So the end points does matter, this height does matter. And that's the reason that such field we call is conservative fields. They are uh, conservative. These things will hold there in a conservative field. In integral form, the closed path integral will be equal to zero. Its scale will be equal to zero. And the force associated with that well, that force curl will be equal to zero. That force will also be a diverging force, and the work done on a unit charge in that field will be equal to zero. 